All right. Well, I think we'll go ahead and uh, get started now. Uh, again, this is our uh, virtual spring seminar uh, hosted by myself, Mike, uh, and our growing operations manager, Fred Higginbotham. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for showing up on this virtual occasion. I think the past few years uh, since the pandemic, we've done it virtual. We had a few in-person events uh, before that. Um, I think they went really well. So I think this is something we're definitely going to continue. Uh, and it seems like the virtual uh, performance or virtual um, presentation, you know, it's very convenient for everyone getting getting ready for the spring season. So. Right. So, uh, like I said, you know, uh, I am your host today, and Fred's uh, kind of going over our plant material. Uh, just a brief little introduction about myself. I've been with Mill Creek uh, for almost a decade now. Uh, started out growing in different departments. Um, recently, uh, just finished up my time in the propagation. So all those um, herbs and uh, some of the perennials you received from us were all started by me and the wonderful team at Mill Creek Gardens. Um, I'm an OSU grad, uh, really enjoy spending time outdoors. Um, so I'm really uh, struggling to be inside today with the, the beautiful weather, as someone commented. Um, yeah, it's bright and sunny here in Ostrander, Ohio. Um, now, the photo that behind me isn't quite accurate, but uh, it is a really nice day. And I'm sure everyone's uh, experienced the same if you're in the Ohio area. A um, few favorite perennials that I've come to really enjoy here at Mill Creek. Uh, Ligularia, Midnight Lady, uh, Colony, Hot Lips and uh, Lavendula Super Blue, which is a pretty new introduction of lavender, um, really phenomenal color and lots of lots of blooms on that. Uh, so if you weren't aware, uh, it's our birthday today, Mill Creek's uh, 45th anniversary. Um, we've been in business for 45 years, which is just a, a crazy phenomenon these days for businesses. Um, Mill Creek was started uh, in 1978 by George and Linda Peeler. Uh, at that time, they were just growing perennials and herbs, and obviously we've expanded our offerings over the years. Um, but basically, uh, this place just started in that back right corner of this map on a little tiny um, plot of land. This is a photo of the first day of production uh, at Mill Creek Gardens. Um, I think there were, there were uh, potting bare root uh, from Walter's Gardens. Um, you know, right outside the station wagon into two gallon perennials, uh, which we grew for a while. And we've kind of brought back into our lineup again, um, just for some larger summer items. Um, but yeah, that was the first day of production on the property. Uh, we've expanded since then, you know, to, uh, you know, from zero buildings now to about four structures we have on site um, from our office, which has undergone multiple renovations. Um, our production building, our propagation area, and our most, most recent addition, the um, shipping structure, um, which has been a great use for us. So the, uh, the scene behind me, uh, not too far from uh, where we see George Peeler here, um, looking like he's getting ready to plant some perennials for uh, a nice aesthetic entryway into Mill Creek Gardens. Uh, our sign has seen a uh, quite a few upgrades uh, since then, but uh, the power lines are still there and, uh, you know, it, it's the same entryway. So here we are, the, the scene behind me, the entryway. So if you've been to our property before, uh, this is what you'll see upon entry. Um, we've got a couple nice perennial gar beds uh, in front of the, in front of the property and a nice um, display garden where we try and plant a lot of our new items uh, year after year. Um, and we've had a wonderful team uh, kind of come out and help and take care of that for us uh, when we're busy in the in the spring season. So um, Mill Creek Gardens has made several appearances over the years of uh, of the, showcasing our uh, varieties um, and perennial selection in Greenhouse Grower Magazine, uh, something we're really proud of, um, especially, you know, the amount of varieties we continue to grow and all those offerings uh, we, we like to have for all of you customers. So one thing that's obviously changed uh, throughout the years, and I'm sure a lot of people have noticed that this year, uh, our catalog has uh, gone through many iterations year after year, starting with one of these first ones in 1980 uh, with hand-drawn logo 
um, all the way to our color printed catalogs uh, of recent years. And this year we've moved uh, made the decision uh, to have a full digital catalog, um, which, you know, it, it, people have uh, voiced their um, opinions about. And, uh, you know, we're definitely all sad to see it go. Um, but, you know, in this this age of uh, printing all these materials and uh, we're happy to be a more sustainable option now. Um, and that flip book, that digital catalog does have a nice paper sound to it as you scroll through it. So you get some of the same aesthetic uh, when you're using that. So one major thing that's changed, uh, you know, in the last decade, uh, Mill Creek, um, beyond varieties and catalogs, is kind of our processes and how we've done things. Um, we used to log all of our deliveries and shipments on a big whiteboard, uh, you know, a lot of uh, rearranging throughout the day, erasing, editing as, as additions to orders come in. Um, so we've had a great IT team that's kind of custom built, um, you know, a software for us that helps track all of our deliveries, really uh, eases the burden of uh, planning the logistics of deliveries and uh, helps our growing and office team coordinate um, a little better um, on, on the shipments. So uh, as many of you know, Columbus, Ohio has been host to a, a few trade shows uh, in the past, uh, most notably Cultivate uh, year after year, it tends to be a great show, um, but also Sense, um, so we've always been proud to showcase at a lot of those uh, events um, and, and not just our plant products, um, but our knowledgeable staff. Um, here, we obviously have George Peeler receiving one of his uh, first ribbons uh, at a trade show um, back, I think, in, uh, I think this is 85. So the team's a little bit different these days. Uh, we've got a little bit more color at our trade show booths. Uh, probably has something to do with the the new cameras out there on our phones, um, but uh, that's one of the great things about Cultivate being so close to Mill Creek is we're able to uh, bring a lot of the team members out there um, and really showcase a lot of our perennials um, on the days of the trade show. So uh, we've expanded uh, not too far from that original first day of production. Uh, we've expanded our, our outdoor growing space, our covered growing space to fit nearly, uh, you know, the million, million and a half close to plants that we're producing every year and selling annually. Um, doesn't look like this quite yet out here, but, you know, in a couple of weeks, um, some of these nursery rows will start to fill up outside as, as temps start warming up. So even though we're, we're prepared to move stuff outside early, uh, Mother Nature always has uh, different plans for us. Uh, this is a photo um, back in 2015. Um, it was late March, um, and we're always getting, you know, a, a early April, late March frost around here. We're expecting it this year. Um, but that year, we just happened to have so much plant material on the ground that we had more plants than frost blankets could cover. Um, so one of the um, strategies we use to insulate our plant material uh, during those cold, cold times uh, is to run irrigation water over it and uh, continue to run it uh, until that frost is um, off the plants. And this helps insulate it from the wind uh, and cold temps that are below, below freezing and tends to keep the plant material closer to a freezing temp than, uh, than single digits. Um, Beyond our growing space, like I said, we've uh, expanded a lot of our um, business over 45 years. Um, if you look in the upper right-hand corner of this image, that's our production building uh, that I believe was finished in 2008. Um, so we've got two fully automated machines in that building um, and a new machine this year for our flatted items um, that we're really excited about, um, as well as uh, our single pot machine. Um, so we'll run flatted items through uh, one machine and uh, impacts and pros and sometimes two gallons through our single pot um, machine as well. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner is our office and, uh, or, well, now currently it is just office, but it used to be our shipping warehouse as well. So this is what you come in and see when you enter our driveway. Um, we can be found in those doors right through there, but we've gone through multiple renovations uh, over the past few years of creating more office space, more break room space as our staff, um, as we take on more staff. Um, and yeah, we're still able to make it work in there. 
So this is our kind of most recent development on the property. If you haven't been out here for an open house or, or picking up plants, this is our new shipping structure. Um, so this was finished in 2019 um, and we started uh, using it in the spring of 2018 processing or 2020, sorry, processing all our orders through it. Um, so we'll pull up our plant material to the sides of these doors here and offload material into uh, that shipping structure where we'll clean, tag, and process all your plants um, before it goes out on our delivery trucks. Prior to that building um, being built, this was uh, the adjacent space to our office um, where we used to do the same thing. Um, so we used to pull our farm wagons uh, through this structure, uh, clean every order, um, and process you know, up to 12 trucks a day um, in this very small space. Um, and uh, we're all thankful that we're no longer uh, working in there late at night and we have a new structure to be a part of. Uh, so this is how we used to process all of our orders. We used to bring uh, wagons of plants uh, around the nursery um, and pull one order at a time. Uh, so if, if one of our customers had a large order, it might be multiple wagons. Uh, sometimes it could be two orders to a wagon, but we would process each ticket for an order individually um, and then bring them through the shipping warehouse. Um, and now we're pulling items on our, what we call our chariots. Uh, and so these racks are the same racks that we'll ship on. Um, so we'll pull all of one item. For example, these decorative planners, we may pull all of one type uh, just one time per day or two times per day. Um, take those down to our shipping facility where they'll perform what's called a supermarket shop. Um, and then that's when each order will start to come together uh, down there in the shipping building. Um, you know, beyond uh, facility things and, and new processes, um, we've also made some critical investments over the past few years. Uh, this is a, a photo of our um, propane tanks um, that we used to use to heat all of our greenhouses. Um, so most of our greenhouses are heated very minimally when temperatures are cold enough to damage our plants. Um, we made a, the crucial switch over to natural gas. Uh, I believe that was maybe 2015. Um, and uh, now, you know, it was, a, it was a great cost saving and just in time um, for some pretty cold winters. Um, and it's really, you know, allowed us to keep staying in business um, and keep providing everybody with plants. So here you have the original crew of Mill Creek um, at one of the original structures. So this is what's now what we currently call Greenhouse 3, but it is the first uh, 2,000 square foot Quonset hut at Mill Creek, um, happily built by the owners. Um, and uh, yeah, it's still, this, this structure still sees a lot of plant material running through it every year. About 200,000 uh, plugs of plant material pass through this greenhouse uh, still on an annual basis. A lot, a lot of basil and a lot of our herbs. So our crews uh, expanded quite a bit over the years. Uh, we're, we're just under 30 full-time staff members um, these days. Um, but yeah, as, uh, as the season picks up, we'll, we'll usually have an additional 40 plus uh, seasonal staff members uh, join us to get us through the busy months uh, and make sure we can get all of your plant material outdoors. So it's pretty impressive what 45 uh, years have brought to Mill Creek. We've seen a lot of uh, expansion uh, in my time alone. Um, so I joined the team in 2013, um, and this was a view, um, I believe this was in 2008. So from 2008 uh, till, till when we are now, uh, you can see kind of the changes we've made and the uh, additions we've put on. So it's been, uh, you know, over a dozen New Quonset huts, maybe even close to 20. Um, it's been a new pump house. It's been a new shipping structure um, and a lot of new changes to the way we, um, you know, the, the procedural changes we've made and uh, the practices at Mill Creek have also transitioned. So it's been a really good, uh, you know, decade for me. And it's been a great 45 years for Mill Creek, I'd say. We're happy to celebrate um, this this 45 year mark for us. Um, which has just been wonderful. So that's kind of uh, my 45-year um, intro to our spring seminar. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of those old photos of, of George and some new photos um, of, our, of our business. Um, and from here on, uh, Fred's going to uh, start us off uh, with the new variety introduction. 
Um, but before we continue with that, I think we're going to have a um, we're going to have a polling question. Let's see if I can pull that up. So we'll have a polling question, so you can answer this. This should hopefully uh, pop up on your screen when I click this. Um, and so feel free to answer it. If you don't want to answer it, that's fine. If you have any additional comments to the polling questions, uh, please type those in the chat chat box as well. So our first polling question, uh, which of our products uh, gets the most feedback from your customers? Um, is it the perennials that we grow? Do they always come for the herbs, the basil, um, or are annuals uh, a hot topic with our hanging baskets and decorative planters these days? So. Please answer that at your leisure, and we'll continue on um, continue on as that's going. All right, Fred, I'm going to hand it off to you after a brief introduction. So Fred's actually uh, been with us for almost two decades now. Um, he's got um, a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture from Ohio State, so we're a lot of Ohio State grads here. Uh, been a team member uh, since 2005 and uh, is fully responsible for the growing operations um, labor management, um, and a, a whole host of things at Mill Creek that Fred does. So Fred, take it away. Hello. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully well. Um, I know the, oh, can you see me there, Mike? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, hopefully everybody's uh, having a great day, experiencing some nice weather, and, uh, you know, when we get sunny days like this, it always makes me feel blessed that we're in this industry. And we get to be outside and be around plants. But at the same time, it kind of makes me nervous as well, because I think of all the work that still needs to be done before spring approaches here. And uh, I guess you can probably all feel that it is happening quickly. Um, so hopefully we'll get you excited by talking about some new plants here. And we'll kind of jump into, looks like probably some perennials here. So yes, um, perennials is what I always tell people is kind of the backbone of our business. That's what George uh, was always very passionate about. Um, so, uh, you know, that's kind of obviously what we specialize in. So we're going to kind of touch on some of the new perennials that we're going to be offering. Okay, so first one is Lavender Sensational. Uh, Lavender's been probably one of the better selling genera for us probably the last five or so years. Uh, the introduction of a lavender called Phenomenal, which you can see the purple bloom here on the right, uh, has been a really great seller for us. So the Sensational is brought to us by the same folks at Peace Tree Farms uh, that introduced Phenomenal. They have now introduced the Sensational, and you can see quite a difference uh, in the size of the buds and the blooms. Uh, that this plant has. Uh, we're really excited to have this as a new introduction for our 2023 lineup. I know we do have these available in quartz and impacts. Um, gets to about 24 inches tall, kind of looks like a lavender Provence, again, kind of similar to a, a phenomenal as well, but the big showstopper is these big fat buds that these guys have. Okay, next one. This is Dianthus American Pie Berry a la Mode. So uh, we do some of these already uh, in the American Pie series. We've got the Bumbleberry, Georgia Peach, uh, one of my personal favorites, the Key Lime. Um, these are really great Dianthus. These are going to be more of an upright growing Dianthus as opposed to some of the more mounding Dianthus like a Fire Witch or a Neon Star, which are also really great varieties. But this one is a little bit more slender and upright. Big fat buds. I mean, you can kind of see the, the buds in the background of the picture here kind of looks like a carnation bud almost, uh, but those buds are pretty fat because they do have really large blooms and they are super fragrant as well. So uh, I believe we're offering this one in our impacts and our pro line this year. So keep an eye out for availability on those. Okay, uh, so this is one of our proven winner new introductions. This one's called uh, Heaven Sent. Uh, I just want to tell a, a quick little story real quick. Um, we we grow one variety called Bressingham Purple. We've been offering it for, for years and years, and it's a really good plant. And one of the things that I love most about the Bressingham Purple is those purple blooms on there smell just like Concord grapes. 
Um, I grew up in Western New York and in the little small town that I lived in as a kid, uh, we had a Welch's grape juice plant. And unlike here in Ohio, where there are fields of corn and soybeans, in our little town and surrounding area, there were vineyards of Concord grapes. So in the fall, um, the grape farmers would harvest their grapes and they would be shipped to our town. And the little town of Westfield would smell so amazing uh, with all these grapes coming in. And the balloons on this pulmonium, every time I walk by or smell this plant reminds me of being back home and the kind of that fall season of just all these Concord grapes coming into our town. Uh, my guess is that uh, this is why this plant has been named Heaven Scent for the uh, really unique bloom, or excuse me, the really unique fragrance that it has. Like I said, Bressingham Purple is a, is a really good plant that we've been offering for many years. Uh, the one thing that's holding it back from being a great plant is that it can get kind of tall and a little leggy at times. Uh, so we're really excited to offer this Heaven Scent, which gets to about half the height of the Bressingham Purple. Um, as you can see in the picture there, it's got a little bits of shades of burgundy in the foliage. So you'll kind of see some of that during the cool weather. Um, so all around, really great plant. And like I said, if, if you ever want to know what Western New York smells like or walking through a great vineyard in the fall, uh, take a big whiff of uh, Pulmonium Heaven Scent. Okay, Salvia, Blue by You. Uh, so this is a new introduction from uh, our folks uh, or our friends at Darwin. Um, so this is kind of a hybrid between a Nemorosa and a Pretensis Salvia. So with that Nemorosa kind of parentage, you're going to get really good hardy uh, plants that you can kind of rely on from uh, uh, an overwintering standpoint. And then that pretensis is going to give us these really nice, elegant blooms that you can see here on this picture on the right. Um, grows to about 20, 24 inches. You know, again, a lot of the same attributes that you would expect from, from salvias, repeat bloomers, again, solid winter hardiness. Uh, this is one that um, we did some trials on last summer and um, really liked it. So we ended up picking it up in our court and impact line. So uh, I would imagine that these are gonna be hitting availability here, or excuse me, looking really good here in about next month or so. So I'd say keep an eye out on availability for those as well. Okay, I'm, I'm a sucker for uh, some of these echinacea that have these really dark stems. Uh, this is a Terra Nova introduction. Um, you know, the folks over there, Dan Himes, they do some really amazing work and come out with some really cool introductions. Uh, the description of this being called a watermelon pink bloom is about as perfect as it gets. Um, and, you know, the nice thing about this variety here, this uh, Dark Shadows Wicked, is that these only is going to grow to about 12 to 14 inches tall. So, over probably the last five, eight plus years, we've seen so many new plants being kind of shrunk down, um, which, you know, is a really great thing and on several levels. Uh, so, you know, echinacea is certainly one of those general that we've seen a lot of kind of dwarf plants being introduced. Um, so yeah, really excited to see this. I think our availability numbers on this specific plant are getting kind of low. Um, so, only in impacts at this point. So if you see it on availability, be sure to snatch that up here real soon. Okay, um, Echinacea Arsen uh, Yellow Ombre. So this is a new one that we had spotted at uh, Cultivate last year. Uh, we were already offering the Red Ombre and Soft Orange, which uh, these were kind of in one of our main nursery rows, kind of our main driveway that everybody walks up and down uh, last summer. And when these things were blooming, I mean, you couldn't take your eyes off them. The phenomenal color with the red and like I said, that soft orange, really well branched. Um, these, unlike the previous echinacea we just looked at, will get a little bit bigger, about two to two and a half feet tall. Uh, we start these from a really fat, it's either a 20 or 32 count plug. So by the time these finish uh, in our number two pots, they should be really nice, large plants that, you know, going to have some really phenomenal color on them. 
and uh, you know, be a really great addition uh, to you know uh, people's uh, orders uh, for you know summer, uh, some really nice summer color. Okay, helianthus um, autumn gold. I think last time we did one of these webinars, we talked about a helianthus called uh, Lemon Queen that we were kind of re-adding to our lineup. That Lemon Queen got to about seven or eight feet tall. This one's kind of the exact opposite. This one gets to about two feet tall, but we'll have a phenomenal color display uh, as you can expect from a helianthus kind of later in the season. Uh, this will give you some really solid color from September until frost. Um, big fan of just yellow flowers. It just kind of reminds me of summer and always kind of going into the fall, holding on to those last few days of summer. But, you know, having this nice yellow bloom kind of, you know, uh, extends that summer season or at least the feel of, of the summer season. So um, if you're really big into attracting birds or, you know, keeping the birds around your house during the winter, the seed pods or excuse me, the seed heads. Uh, on these blooms uh, are really great for the birds, a really cool food source. So be sure to plant these near the house if you want to see, you know, some winter activity uh, flying around during the dead of winter. Okay, three gallon hibiscus. So this is a, a product that we've been offering for probably maybe five or, or six years. Um, if you've never been to, to Walter's Gardens, uh, they're very open to, uh, to guests up there. They've got just some phenomenal trial gardens, but specifically the, the work that they've done on hibiscus the last 10 years has been really phenomenal. Um, you know, you can kind of see here from this picture, this edge of night, I mean, just that, that dark foliage contrasting with those pink blooms is, is just really incredible. It takes a little bit for something to establish it and, and get this big, but once, once it does, these will grow up to, to four feet tall, um, you know, uh, huge blooms, I don't know if seven to eight inches is quite dinner plate size blooms, but these will get really uh, substantial in size. And this is one of those plants that if you've got it in your yard, you know, your neighbors are walking by, it, it's hard to, to not see something that's this big and, and this beautiful and, and this unique. So keep an eye out, I would say mid-June for a summerific edge of night. Okay, more summerific. Okay, so, um, we had this weird anomaly last year uh, for, for years and years and years, we would always sell out of hibiscus. And for, for whatever reason, that was not the case last year. And, and it wasn't just us, it was, you know, friends in the industry that we've talked to. Uh, hibiscus just kind of didn't seem to be somewhat of a, a popular item last year. And I am not sure why, but we have uh, kind of a unique opportunity this year where we've got uh, quite a few three gallon hibiscus that we're going to be overwintering or we are overwintering um, this year. We've probably got about eight to 10 varieties uh, of this summerific series that we're going to be uh, releasing to our availability once they start breaking dormancy. Uh, typically, every spring, we've got customers asking, When can I get hibiscus? You know, we, we've got customers asking for them, When can we get them? We're, we're kind of at the mercy of our suppliers for our spring crop. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll dig this stuff up and they've got a pretty specific window of when they will ship it to us. So again, we're at the mercy of how soon we can pot this stuff up. But this year we will be overwintering probably close to, I don't know, 12 to 1500 uh, three gallon hibiscus. And once they start breaking dormancy, which I would expect to be kind of late April to early May, because they do break a little bit later, than most perennials. Um, we will release those on our availability uh, once we know that they've got multiple shoots and that we're sending out good quality plants. So keep an eye out for some really nice, solid, overwintered, uh, summerific hibiscus. Okay, this is a, another plant that we tried out last summer. This is a Nepeta Prelude Blue. We also are offering a purple variety as well. This is not your average walker's low or, or cat's meow. Uh, this is a little bit more of an upright, um, grows to about 24 inches tall, really unique blooms, really unique foliage on here. Um, I think one of the attributes of this is it's gonna be just as tough as some of the other nepetas that you're used to. Uh, again, this is a, a Darwin 
perennial. Again, we trialed this out last year and had really good success with it. So we are now offering this in our court and impact lines for uh, this year. Actually, just saw this this morning. Uh, we had not overwintered it. Uh, this is the first year that we've overwintered this crop. And it's, it's kind of unique. It's breaking from the ground, kind of like you would see from like an Amsonia, uh, the, the few um, new new patches of, of new growth that I saw is really dark foliage. So I'm really excited to kind of see what this looks like here in a week or two, you know, especially as we've got some warmer temps here, just to see what this thing looks like as it's breaking dormancy. But like I said, we've offering a blue and a purple version of this. All right, Delisperma, ocean sunset. Ooh, okay, sunset, uh, orange vibe and orange glow. Um, again, this is another Darwin selection that we're trialing out. Uh, we've had really good luck with the, the, the WOW series of the World of Wonder, Dianthus. Um, this one's being touted as having uh, the largest blooms. So we're growing this from unrooted cuttings. I just saw these about a week or two ago. The, the plugs that we're working on bulking up are pretty chunky looking. So uh, we're probably going to be potting them here in about another week or two. So anxious to see kind of what these guys do and how they stack up compared to the, the WOW series, which has been, like I said, really phenomenal for us. Um, you know, we really like this one here on the bottom, this orange glow with kind of this pink hues on the outside and orange in the middle. So yeah, Dallas Berm is certainly one area over the past 10 years that's gotten a lot of love from a, a breeding standpoint. Um, you know, there was a, a, a point in time where there was Cooper Eye and uh, maybe another one na named uh, Nubigenum, I think is what it was. Uh, and so where it's Con, con, come from from 10 years ago to now it's it's really pretty wild so like i said we'll, we'll keep an eye out on this orange vibe and orange glow and, and see how they stack up so keep an eye out for these in our court line this year okay lilies all right so uh we've done really well probably i don't know the last eight plus years with these tiny the the tiny series of lilies so We've added this tiny W, uh, offering this only in our impact line. Um, generally, we're potting up three bulbs to a impact pot. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. And then we've got this after eight is another new one that we've, oh, it's, it's not new to the, the market, but it's new to us here at Mill Creek. Uh, this one after eight stands about half the size of our stargazers that we've typically been growing. So it looks very similar, very floriferous, uh, but only grows to about 14 to 18 inches tall. So uh, again, that will only be in our court program. So I would imagine here, probably in the next two weeks, we're going to be starting to pot some of this stuff up. So again, keep an eye out on availability. All right, so uh, that kind of ends somewhat of the, the portion of the new perennial. So we're going to kind of transition here to annuals, which for the last 10 years has been uh, each year growing and growing a, a bigger part of, of what we're doing here at Mill Creek. Brett, I'm going to interrupt just one yes. moment here and uh, review um, our results from our first poll. Uh, obviously, uh, we're known for perennials, so it's good to see that uh, perennials was the top answer there. Um, not only do you guys, uh, you know, really appreciate and uh, understand our quality, but it seems like your customers um, see the quality um, at the greenhouse um, too, or wherever you're selling these. And uh, so that's great to hear. Uh, herbs was about 26% of the answers and annuals were 14. So it seems like we're gaining some traction on our annuals uh, and it's it's good. Uh, thank you all for, for buying those from us. Uh, we're, we're like Fred's about to uh, show, we're, we're always expanding on our annual lineup and we're really excited about what we had to have to offer this year. I'm gonna go ahead and ask another um, poll question too. Um, and it's about mom. So for those of you who didn't know, um, we did have uh, fall mums this this past um, this past fall, um, and we'll be doing that again. And those will be available um, in in late August, so look out for those. Um, but it's just a very simple question about your favorite color of mum. We forgot to put in there a uh, non-option. Uh, you, you hate mums, um, so sorry for those that don't like mums. All right, Fred, we'll let that run and you can uh, jump back into uh, the annual presentation. Okay, 
All right, sounds good. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll jump into some annual color here. Okay, there we go. All right, so hanging baskets has been a, a new part of our lineup here. I think this will probably be maybe the fourth year that we've been doing them. Uh, we can't seem to have enough. Uh, one of the new ones that we've added this year is this Misty Seas here on the left. Uh, really excited to see what this one does. Uh, reason we picked this one is it's got a lot of the uh, mini Vista petunias in here. So we're anxious to see kind of how this one performs and see, um, you know, we're hoping that maybe it's not as aggressive as some of the other ones with the, um, uh, like a Vista bubble gum, where those are a little, uh, I guess aggressive is a good word. Uh, they can kind of grow real quick. So we're hoping that this one here is a little bit more tame. And then here on the right, so night skies, again, this is nothing new, but we're trying something different this year where we are going to be offering just a monoculture uh, container of the uh, night skies and see, I know we've got a lot of new gardeners out there in the in industry or joining the uh, the industry here the last couple of years, new customers. And uh, I, I don't know how you walk by, you know, something as cool as as this night sky and, and not want to take something like that home. So we're really excited to offer that in our 12 inch hanging basket line this year. All right, and we're still offering our 12 inch decorative planters. Uh, this year, we're gonna try something a little bit more old school and do some uh, red geranium. So we're gonna be growing the Calliope series. So we're gonna be offering this dark red here. Um, you know, as I was saying, you know, we're, we're kind of new to the annual world. And, you know, 20 years ago when I first worked at a greenhouse, um, you know, red geraniums was, was still a big thing. And uh, I can remember picking off spent blooms and shoving them in my pocket. And, um, you know, as we have kind of transitioned into this annual world, we're, you know, still kind of learning what's, what's selling really well. And apparently, uh, red geraniums is still a hot item. So we're excited to be offering that here this year. And then this is just another uh, combination that we've picked up this morning skies, really soft color, really soft color tones to this one as well. Uh, always been a big fan of the peachy keen verbena. Uh, so we're going to see how this new introduction morning skies does for us this year. Okay, Angelonia Archangel, Archangel. So this one is certainly not new to the industry, but it is new to Mill Creek. Um, you know, one thing you may notice this year is that we are charging two different price points for our annuals for forever. We'd just been one, or we'd been offering just one price point, whether you were purchasing a plant in a black pot. Uh, whether it was a proven winner or not. Um, last year, proven winner started, I guess, mandating, you could say, uh, that all their annuals needed to be grown in their white proven winter pots. And um, with that came an additional cost as well. So as we're kind of going into this season, uh, year two, growing in the white proven winter pots, we've kind of just taken a look at our lineup to see if there's any potential areas that we can maybe offer some alternatives that aren't proven winners that we can be maybe a lower price point to our customers. So this Angelonia Archangel is one of those scenarios where we're bringing in something different. Uh, so this is a ball introduction. It's been around for quite a while. Solid performer grows to 10 to 12 inches, excuse me, 12 to 14 inches tall, huge blooms. Uh, this is one of those annuals that kind of prefers the summer heat. So you won't see this hitting our availability till kind of the end of the annual season in late May. Um, but it doesn't mean it's, a, it's, it's not going to be a great plant kind of going into the summer. So uh, also offering other than this dark rose, a coral, pink, purple, and a white. All right, so this is probably one of the plants that I'm most excited for this year, these super cows. So uh, again, we've kind of talked about breeding and, and what's been happening, you know, the last couple of years. Uh, this is another kind of unique situation where there's kind of this hybrid combination between a petunia and a calipercoa, and we get these super cows, some people call them pachoas. 
This is an introdu uh, introduction from Cicada. Um, just really cool, vibrant colors. We had a couple last year um, and they were really great performers. Um, I think it was this neon rose was one that we had done last year. And, um, you know, so these aren't really going to be kind of a big trailer like you would see from, say, like a, a Vista bubblegum or some of the Vistas. These are going to be a little bit more tame. Um, the premium series of these is going to have kind of larger blooms. It's going to be a little bit more of a, a mounding habit. One of the things that these are being touted for is doing well in both kind of a cool growing environment and also the heat as well. So, uh, like I said, this is one of those annual varieties that I'm really, really excited for for this year. So again, we're going to be offering, you know, a couple of the, let's see, Lavender Star and Neon Rose. So these are kind of the non-premier ones, but new this year would be the Cinnamon, the Sunray Pink, and uh, Sunset Orange. So yes, I would snatch these up when you can, because I've got this feeling they're going to go quick. Okay, uh, baby wing, uh, bicolor. Okay, we love our begonias here. Uh, we love the baby wings. We love the dragon wings. Uh, this one, probably not the most fancy of plants, but these are just really great uh, landscape. Uh, just a really good traditional plant that you can put in the ground from a landscape perspective to kind of fill in a really great area. Very floriferous, uh, grows to about 12 to 15 inches tall. Uh, this one will have kind of that green foliage as opposed to kind of the darker brownish coppery tone. Um, this bicolor here has kind of just got this softer salmon color, almost like a two-tone here. So really excited to offer this new baby wing bicolor. All right, marigolds. I, I, I think marigolds get a, get a bad rap. I mean, they do have a, a rather unique smell to them, but uh, for me personally, um, you know, they've got a little special spot in my heart. I, I can remember as a little boy, and I'm sure many of you out there listening can kind of uh, think and put yourself in this position too as, as a young child. Uh, but one of my youngest memories as, as a little guy back home was, you know, at the end of a fall season before, you know, all the, the snow came, going out with my mom and collecting, you know, spent uh, marigold blooms and, and collecting them and putting them in a coffee can and storing them in the barn uh, for the winter and then the following season going out and sowing those little those little seeds in the soil and and watching them grow. So um, like I said, I, I think these marigolds are underutilized and underappreciated. Just really top, excuse me, really soft, really solid and tough plant grow to 10 to 12 inches. Again, these aren't new, but we've had pretty good luck uh, with a couple of these Durango. So we're adding several other new ones to our lineup as well. So um, really large blooms come in a variety of different colors. So keep an eye out for these this spring and then also in the fall as well. All right. Caliber Co. Cabaret. Okay, so this is another one of those kind of options that we're offering as a, a, a non-proven winner alternative to uh, the Super Bells. Cabaret series has been around for a while as well. So nice, tidy habit, uniform growth. We're offering about 10 different varieties of these Cabaret. Again, I said it earlier, I'm always a big fan of the yellow blooms. It's kind of why we're showcasing this one here today. But uh, in the Cabaret series, you'll find some good solid colors, kind of like this pink or purples. Uh, but we'll also be offering some bi colors as well. So we will have some of these early in mid-April, uh, along with some other kind of cool season annuals that we're going to be offering, some, some verbenas and petunias as well. So if you're looking for annuals early, kind of mid-April to, you know, late April, we'll, we'll have some of those. Um, and then also we're going to have another rotation of these kind of finishing late April too. So uh, keep an eye out for the lemon yellow and the other nine or 10 varieties of cabarets that we're going to be offering. Okay, so this is a proven winner variety, this 
the uh, Super Bells double, double amber here on the left. The one on the right is the blue. Uh, it's just really unique bloom. So we're not completely bailing on proven winners by, by any means. But uh, if, if we see something new that looks like it's going to be an, an attractive grower and a good seller for us, we, are, we will certainly, you know, evaluate it and see about picking it up. So this is a new one that we're going to be offering this year. So like I said, really unique kind of double bloom, self-cleaning, nice tidy habit. So uh, we're going to be offering, like I said, this double amber you'll see here on the left, the blue that you see on the right, along with a nice ruby color and an orange. Okay, Salvia, Sun or Sally Fun Deep Ocean. So uh, when we started kind of making the transition away from some proven winter varieties, uh, the one that I was most disappointed that we kind of lost uh, was we were offering some six inch salvia uh, the 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 rockin series uh, you know the, the the quality of the um, the pots and the trays that we had to use just did not fall in line with kind of the quality expectations and standards that we try to hold for ourselves here at Mill Creek so uh, we were sad to see those go um, so we're trying to find some some alternatives, and so we're going to try this deep ocean out. This is a Danzinger introduction. This is probably most similar to the uh, Salvia Rockin playing the blues. Um, gets to you know again, to, you know uh, about a foot to foot and a half tall. I mean these Salvia are phenomenal plants for attracting pollinators uh, throughout the summer months. Really great in containers, kind of give you that you know thriller. Uh, look. So uh, we're going to be offering this Sally Fun, and I believe we're also offering a, a white version of this as well. So keep an eye out for these in our six-inch annuals, and we will continue to explore and try to find some, some alternatives, especially, I mean, that Rock and Fuchsia was really phenomenal. It's probably the one that I'm, I'm most upset uh, about losing. So like I said, we'll be on the lookout, you know, as we go to cultivate here again, here in a couple months and, and seeing what kind of new introductions are out there and see if we can kind of fill that gap. All right, Lantana. Okay, so we got Butterscotch Glow here. This is a ball introduction. This is new for, for 2023 to the industry. Uh, you know, Lantana, great plants for summer containers, a little forgiving. They, they tend to really love and thrive in the heat. Um, so we actually don't offer these early on in the season just because this is a really tough plant to grow here in Ohio when, you know, not every day uh, is 60 degrees and sunny in February or March. Uh, so we're kind of combating uh, some kind of tough growing conditions with Lantana early on. So we don't pop these till later on in the season. So these will be hitting availability, uh, I would say late May. Um, and I think we've got about eight other varieties of Lantana. So again, these are heat loving, really great for attracting pollinators. And um, yeah, just keep an eye out for Lantana. Sorry, somebody asked a question. We'll, we'll come back to that question here, uh, I guess maybe here at the end. Um, okay, let's, let's talk herbs. Um, I guess this was the second most voted on item that, you know, they get feedback from our customers. So let's chat herbs. There's, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to find new herbs uh, year after year. You know, they don't seem to get the same attention as, you know, the, the, the ornamental side of things. But, you know, Laura, who's our herb grower, does a really great job in trying to find some new uh, plants out there. So we'll see what we've got. I think it's just got a couple items here. Okay, so let's see. We've got Grower's Friend Sage and this Variegated Burr Garden. Um, so Grower's Friend, one really attractive feature to this one is uh, we can get unrooted cuttings from this as opposed to like our common sage that we grow from seed. Uh, so we can kind of get a little bit faster production cycle out of these. Uh, I was actually just walking through our prop house this morning and kind of saw both of these plants. The uh, grower's friend actually has got some, and you can kind of see it a little bit in this picture, some really nice red kind of stems to it as well. So that was kind of really unique. I was not expecting that when, when I saw that here this morning. And then the variegated burr garden kind of looks similar to like a pineapple sage. The, the, the leaves are certainly a little bit bigger on there as well. 
Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for those. Like I said, they're they're um, we got cuttings of them. We may even receive some here this week as well. We just got a big shipment of unrooted herb, or, yeah, unrooted herb cuttings just yesterday, thankfully, as opposed to Friday afternoon. And um, so we've got a crew sticking away all kinds of cuttings and, and getting the new babies going. So uh, both of these varieties grow to about 18 inches tall. And um, so I would say probably, um, you know, mid-April, you'll start seeing some of these or, uh, new plates going on availability. Okay, this is a new uh, scented geranium that we're trying out. Guess what this smells like? Um, does not smell like a car freshener pine that you would put in your car. It's got some piney notes, I guess you could say to it. Really, really unique foliage to it. Uh, I know we've got some fans out there of scented geraniums and uh, I'm not sure that you could make a tea out of this one, but I, I guess you could try. Um, really soft colored blooms on here. Uh, but like I said, super unique kind of foliage structure on here. So uh, again, our propagation crew has been working hard to, to take a bunch of cuttings off of our stock plants. So we should have a really good um, supply of these in our court, in, in our court herbs um, starting in mid-April. All right, looks like we got another question. I guess I jumped the gun on uh, the, the second question because we've already done that. Um, but uh, we'll move on to the third polling question. Uh, it looks like uh, everyone, uh, you know, we were close to 50%, we had 41% really like the orange, but then we're split between purple, yellow, and red, red mums. So uh, I was a really big fan of that uh, GG gold uh, this past fall that we did. Um, the GG series are just a little bit smaller, a little tighter, um, but they put out a really nice kind of two-tone uh, flower in the fall, which is really, really great. So, um, and is uh, Fred, is that it for our new variety introductions? Um, I think I, so, I think right? So. Yeah, I think we're transitioning. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep. Um, right. So let's go ahead with the last polling question. Uh, it's just in regards to uh, all the varieties that Fred mentioned. Um, so um, which which varieties uh, that we just talked about uh, were you most interested in? Um, and if uh, you don't see your uh, option on there, please list that in the chat. Uh, I think I uh, I needed to open up the chat for everybody and I failed to do that early on. So you should be able to type in the chat now. Um, and if you don't see your favorite on there, list away. While that's going, Fred, do you want to uh, review, uh, you know, what to expect in yeah. summer and fall? Let's keep this party going. Okay. okay. So yes, what you can expect from us, uh, you know, from summer through fall, and then we're going to sneak in a few uh, of our personal favorites in here. So, you know, what we're really trying to do is have crops, you know, specifically targeted during, you know, the month of June to make sure that we're kind of transitioning away from, you know, our spring color programs to offering stuff that's going to be really suitable for for summer. So the hope is to have these new fresh crops coming on and that we're just not relying on spring leftovers or maybe some overwintered leftovers. So, I mean, we've certainly got crops that um, uh, thrive from being overwintered and transition well into the summer, specifically like uh, ferns or, or um, hostas where we'll have good supplies of that stuff. But some of the stuff that really relies on, you know, some of the blooms like an echinacea or a leucanthemum or nepeta, you know, we're working really hard to try to make sure that we've got fresh stock of that. So, yes, so it is our goal to make sure that we have fresh material hitting our availability each week to ensure that you can stock your benches with great looking, high quality plants. All right. So, yeah, we're going to just kind of touch on, you know, a few of the departments and some things that you can expect to see here. So annual, so again, we kind of noted on this with a couple items. 
Uh, there's certain annuals that really tend to just thrive once we kind of get past, uh, you know, some of those cool spring days. And as we transition to summer, uh, they just really, you know, love the heat. So keep an eye out for some angelonias. Again, we kind of mentioned the, the lantanas, but here's another one that the pentas, and then we'll still have some, we'll still have some um, petunias, uh, sun patients. I mean, wh what an incredible introduction sun patients have been, you know, the last five or so years, uh, and then begonias as well. So uh, and a lot of that stuff will be offered in, in four and a half inch pots. Uh, also offering, you know, still some, some heat loving specific crops in our 12 inch decorative planters as well. So keep an eye out for some lantana mixed baskets. And then I, like I said, again, just some other heat loving mixes so stuff that might have scavola in it or pentas or angelonia or again, lantana, uh, some really neat and unique mixes there. And, uh, oh, I got one more there, Mike. And then hanging baskets as well. So we're going to be offering uh, some summer baskets as well. So again, Lantana, we've picked up a really cool kind of trailing Pentis. Uh, we did some trials with some Portulaca last summer that looked really cool. So we're going to be offering uh, some of those as well. And then up in the top right, you can see we've got uh, Feeling Patriotic. We'll be offering those this summer too. So you can help uh, represent the red, white, and blue here as we kind of roll into summer and, you know, Independence Day into July. Okay, herbs. So, you know, this might be a good time for maybe the folks that work at the garden centers to, you know, catch their breath and maybe be able to go home and, and take some herbs and start growing some of their own stuff. So we will have 30,000 plus fresh herbs finishing uh, during the month of June as well. So, this is when you can expect to see a lot of kind of the staples, whether it's the, the basil, this will probably be the end of the line of the cilantro that tend to be a little bit more finicky as the kind of the, the summer heat comes, but dill, eucalyptus loves the summer. Thankfully, we've kind of secured some seed and we're in a much better spot than we have been the last two years, but eucalyptus has been a great uh, summer kind of plant mints, oreganos, parsley, sage, thyme. So we'll have a really good wide variety of plant material finishing, um, you know, for the month of June kind of transitioning, you know, out of spring. And then we'll still be offering some court herbs as well into June. So Emerald Towers, Basil, we'll kind of touch on that here in a little bit, a, a tiny bit more. And then lemongrass, another one of those plants that kind of tends to do a little better once the heat comes. So uh, lots of fresh herbs coming, you know, for, for the month of June. All right, and then perennials. So uh, Mike had mentioned kind of our, our, our Pro 2 line uh, earlier. So we've been doing this for, this will probably be the fourth year. I'm really excited and really like this line. It, you know, the thought process when we introduced this was to have some, uh, again, fresh crops, but really targeting the summer months and making sure that we're selecting plant material that's going to be guaranteed to summer color. And then we can also offer something that's larger size pot that's more of an impact than one of our one gallon impact plants. So look out for, you know, agastaches, echinaceas, heleniums, a new one that we're kind of adding to the lineup. Uh, again, there'll be hibiscus, Rebecca, Nepeta, and, and many others as well. So we're overwintering some stuff. So you probably will see some hitting availability early on in the season. Uh, but a lot of the fresh material, you know, potting up the spring, I would imagine probably by mid-June, you'll start seeing some of that. Um, we kind of mentioned the impact perennials a, a minute ago as well. So We've got 12,000 plus impact perennials finishing during the, the first half of, of June alone. So again, trying to make sure that we've we've got the staples, uh, whether it's the heuchera, the echinacea, this is like prime time for, for echinacea. Again, we've started to get some longer days. Uh, Leucanthemum, another really great selection. Lavender, you know, we've kind of touched on that. Uh, Nepeta, that's a real big uh, genera that's gotten a lot of love the last few years. So there's a lot of really great varieties out there kind of beyond the, the walkers low. Same thing with salvias and perovskias. Those have really gotten some work from a breeding standpoint, kind of shrinking some of that stuff down, getting it a little bit more upright as well. So there's going to be plenty of options on the table. And then again, uh, by, by mid-June, this is when our, our spring 
uh, planted hibiscus will start hitting availability too. So uh, those are always big show stoppers as well. They, they, those things grow so fast and, and do so well. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for those. Okay, fall. So we'll kind of transition into fall here as well. So, um, you know, this will be maybe the third season we, we've offered a fall annual lineup. Uh, as Mike had mentioned, we, we did mums last year and had a really good successful first season with that. Um, let's see. So yeah, so we're expanding our fall lineup. So yeah, keep an eye out for some of the 12 inch decorative planters and a lot of these, or excuse me, a lot of these fall annuals you'll start to see come, come mid August, uh, specifically, you know, down here in the bottom, right. Some of these Rebecca's that, that we'll be offering, uh, cabbages and kale, um, the last two years, we've been offering some of that stuff in a uh, six inch, six to a six inch pot, six to a flat. This year, we're transitioning away from that and going into eight inch pots uh, shipped individually. Um, so that's a, a new thing that we're going to be doing this year. Solosha, this is another one kind of like the marigolds that I don't think they get enough love as well. So we'll have a variety of different colors of of uh, celosias, we've got some of the brain types, some of these plumes like you see here in the top right with this red one. Um, and then that the intense classic is one that we've been doing for a couple of years. Those are really phenomenal growers as well. Uh, marigolds, I mean, those colors that those are offered kind of dovetail really well with a, a fall lineup. Grasses, uh, I've got a picture of a schizocarium uh, here, which makes a phenomenal accent plant. Uh, or excuse me, a, a phenomenal kind of focus uh, for a fall decorative planter. Really, really, really cool color in there. But then we're all figuring some some millets as well, and then and then a variety of kind of smaller accent plants. So whether it's a, a sedum, Angelina, or uh, uh, what was the other, some helichrysum, something like that, to kind of act as little fillers in, in some combo planters. Um, yes, and then mums. Yeah, we're going to be offering mums again. We probably sold about 98% of our crop. Mike mentioned the uh, the GGs. Those did really well for us last year. Actually going to be offering some of those GGs and hanging baskets this year as well. Um, you know, when we had approached George uh, about, I don't know, a couple of years ago, maybe two seasons ago about growing annuals, or excuse me, not annuals, uh, mums. He reminded me that way, way, way back in the day, probably when they still had the, the station wagon, that that they grew mums at, at one point here. But he, he was telling a story about, it must have been maybe a nephew of his would, would come out and lay on the ground and would like pinch off all the buds on on the plants once they were down on the ground. So thankfully, we don't have to go through that process that, you know, again, the breeding has done a lot of great work for us. And uh, we can produce something as beautiful as this nice, perfectly round mum here, right there in the middle. Um, but, you know, it's not just the fall annuals that we're growing are, are great for our fall lineup. Heucra, asters, allium, anemone, there's all kinds of really great, whether it's fall blooming perennials or perennials that offer some really great foliage color as well. Uh, that can work really great for kind of a fall program. So. Um, yeah, what, we got one more. Oh yeah, okay, all right, I almost forgot about this one. Okay, so we were asked to uh, offer up, you know, some of our growers top picks. So first one on here, this is Lindsay. She has been growing our impacts and our pro number ones for uh, the past three or four seasons. She was just recently promoted to our nursery supervisor, which we're super excited for her. But she has noted Leucanthemum Daisy May as her favorite plant. So yes, I would agree. Probably one of our top selling um, Leucanthemums. At one point, it was proven winner's top selling perennial plant. I think Anepida has kind of taken over the top spot. But yes, I would agree. Daisy May, phenomenal plant. Uh, Hannah, she grows our quartz and pro number twos. Hannah has been with us for more than 10 years. Uh, she's been doing a really great job growing our court line for us. And like I said, our pro twos. And she has noted on here, Al Camilla Thriller, really great plant that we offer in our court lineup only. Uh, really beautiful foliage, great ground cover, nice yellow flowers to it. So 
I would concur. Excellent selection. And then we have Laura down here. I'm sure many of you have had the pleasure of meeting Laura or maybe sitting in on one of her herb talks. She was always the highlight of the uh, spring seminars that we've done in the past. And she's done some like cooking displays with herbs. She's, she's been phenomenal. She really pours her heart and soul into uh, growing beautiful herbs for us. And she is on the cusp, I believe next week, going to be approaching 15 years here at Mill Creek. And like I said, she does an outstanding job in taking care of our herb crop. Oh, I didn't even mention what her plant was. Uh, basil, Emerald Towers. So um, if you're not familiar with Emerald Towers, um, you know, the name says it all. Very upright, uh, growing basil, emerald color green. This one, like some of the other sweet basils, kind of can bleach out a little bit or tend to look what I call kind of a, a sprite color, a little yellowish green, but this Emerald Towers really does hold up super well. Um, you know, every year as we're looking at introducing new plants, we're, we're always trying to find kind of that unicorn, something that's really unique. Um, you know, sun patients, I would probably put in that category years ago as something that's kind of came out of nowhere, really unique at the time and has done really well. Uh, I think for us in our herb line, this Emerald Towers has kind of become somewhat of a unicorn. It's just, it's a really great grower for us. And I know Laura's been a, a big fan of it. And then, oh, sorry. I would just like to emphasize how great that basil Emerald Towers is. I've had it yes. in my, my garden two, two seasons in a row. And it just like keeps on giving and giving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there have been times where my sweet basil will you know, uh, you know, kind of bolt, go to seed or go to flower. And this Emerald Tower is just, it seems like you can pick from the same spots over and over again. Uh, and it just like keeps its habit. It's so upright and it's pretty, pretty resistant to downy mildew for how tight these, these leaves are on it. Um, really great plant. Um, yeah. So results from our a new variety polling question all over the place, which is great. Looks like uh, everybody's excited for everything. Uh, but the polymonium hadn't sent. Uh, I think Fred talked that one up quite a bit. It was the Concord grapes, uh, really did it in. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the Echinacea dark shadows, uh, wicked. Also, you know, the color on that looks really striking. Can't wait to see that in flower this year if we have uh, any left before they sell out. Um, so you at the garden centers, if you buy it all from us before those uh, go to flower, uh, please send us photos um, as they as they go to flower too. But uh, answers were, were all over the place, which is... Uh, Good to hear that every every plant got a little bit of love. Um, I, that's it for our polling questions. Um, so now we'll open up. Um, just want to give out thanks to Fred for going over all those varieties with us. Um, Fred, do you have any um, you know kind of closing statements on on the new varieties or, or anything? No, I mean I'm just overall really excited for spring, and uh, you know we've got a really incredible staff here that's working hard every day, whether it's in the sales office or out in the nursery or you know our, our maintenance guy Mark that you know makes sure everything operates and runs fine. And pretty soon here it's going to be drivers that you guys are going to be seeing here making deliveries. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's a big team effort here at Mill Creek, and we're all very passionate about what we do and, and it makes you know doing the type of work that we do do so enjoyable uh, anybody that's here listening knows that this is not easy work by any means but uh, the, the level of gratification that you can get from you know working with plants uh, is, is phenomenal so I love it so yeah excited to see y'all hopefully here soon and uh, yeah keep buying up those plants. Yeah, so at this point, uh, we'll try and answer some questions, um, you know, in regards to all the plants we talked about. Uh, we've got a few in the chat area. We've got a few in the question area. I think I opened up that chat late. Um, so sorry if we you didn't get to, to write as much as you wanted. Um, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll open up some of those questions. Uh, we got one from Bob uh, about winter temps and perennials. Um, you know, I think Fred could probably answer better. I think we had a cool... We had a pretty cool November and then that cold blast in December, I think, which put us in a good spot for a lot of our perennials in terms of vernalization. Um, you know, obviously, 
it's getting really warm right now. A lot of our, we're, we're opening up greenhouse sides on a lot of our uh, greenhouses right now. Um, and, you know, we're trying to cool stuff down as much as we can. I think the biggest issue isn't in terms of uh, quality of vernalization for us. I think we got that. We achieved that. Um, it's more keeping things nice and tight um, before they expand too much in our greenhouses and getting them outside. Um, but Fred, do you have anything else to add to winter tents uh, this it, season you know, so it, far for perennials? It, it's been a, you know, every year is different. It, it's been, it feels like a pretty mild winter. I mean, we, we certainly had that kind of cold spell uh, at the end of the year, maybe well, right around Christmas time. Um, but no, yeah, yeah, I agree, Mike. You know, the, at, at this point, especially on days like today, we, we had a couple of days like this a week or two ago. We're, we're trying to like slow things down more than anything. So you know, Mike mentioned opening doors. Uh, we had some sides rolled up here uh, the other day too. So yeah, we're just trying to like hold things back. And, and you can even see just walking around your yard, we, we've got a silver maple uh, uh, next to our house. I could see buds starting to swell on that. So uh, not good if we get a big push and things start you know, growing too much early. So yeah, we're, we, we want to temper some of those expectations and just, you know, like I said, slow things down here. Because we will yeah. see a late March frost and yes. well, early April you know, and, frost and Mike, for sure. Great example was some of those pictures of, of the frozen yeah. ice. I mean, yeah, that was April, you know, so, or, or, or March. And so we, we've still got a long way to go before that frost-free date. Um, yeah, so next kind of question moving down. In our chat, um, overwintering these hardy hibiscus. Uh, Fred, do you have any comments on on moisture? Um, usually, I mean, in my experience growing, by the time uh, we we get to covering our huts, um, you know, these pots are usually pretty saturated, and we might only hand water these hibiscus one more time before they start pushing um, dormancy. So. Um, I guess I don't really have anything to add to that, Fred. Any? No, I mean, I, I would not go heavy on the water at all. I mean, th those things are so slow to break. They're, they're just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So, uh, you know, I, I'd pick up the pot and see how heavy it is. If it, chances are it's probably heavy and I probably wouldn't do any watering. You're going to probably do more harm than good on them. So, and honestly, uh, we probably won't do much watering of ours uh, until they really start breaking dormancy and actually start putting on some growth. So I, I think you might end up doing more harm than than good by dumping water on them right now. All right. So our uh, our fall mums will be doing just in the eight inch pot. Um, somebody uh, emphasized uh, that the nine inch uh, seems to be like the standard these days. Um, so with this season, we're definitely still doing the eight inch, but um, you know, if, if that trend continues and uh, we hear enough from our customers that the nine inch pot's the way to go, uh, there's certainly, uh, you know, opportunity there. But sure. as of now, we're still going with the eight inch. Um, we do not grow any hardy mums uh, besides the Claire Curtis. Are we doing that one this year, Fred? Claire Curtis? Oh, yes. man. That's a blast from the past. Somebody yeah, I don't think we're growing that this no, year. Oh gosh, we we probably haven't grown that in 15 years, I would yeah. guess. At least 10. So no, no hardy mums. Yep. Uh so for those uh wondering about um accessing this video later, we'll be saving this uh to our YouTube website. We'll send out a link uh to that um this afternoon once we wrap up. Um so you and your team members can view it uh, whenever you want. Plants. Let's see. Okay. And then we got a few questions in our uh, Q&A section. Um, ice wine Coreopsis. Uh, we haven't grown that in about two years, I feel like. We did two varieties two years back. I really liked it. It's a very nice, upright, sturdy, thick Coreopsis. Uh, but no, we are, we're not going to have that this season. Um, any more questions? What is the grass in the picture for the fall lineup? Was that a little blue stem? That was Shizakarium uh, standing ovation. All right, let's see if we can go back to that for everybody. Yeah, standing yeah. ovation, great, great fall color. I mean, yeah. that's just it's it's, it's it's perfect. Yep. Yeah. Love it. <clears throat> friends and family dates. So for those um, mm -hmm. who have uh, been out to our friends and family 
um, before, um, you know, we, we open up once the season's done and we have uh, a sale for the locals nearby, um, you know, so we, we're not sure usually when that is, but it's definitely well after spring uh, once we calm down um, and we provide plants to all of our, our great garden center customers. So um, no date for our friends and family. But we do have um, uh, in the works our uh, our uh, open house. So uh, our open house is usually uh, the week after Labor Day, I believe. Uh, so it's the Friday, um, that first Friday in September. Um, so after spring, look out for our mailings about our open house. Uh, we'd love to see everyone out here, um, you know, uh, with your one or two team members. Um, we usually have lunch provided and do some educational kind of seminars for everybody. Um, so we love that event. It's one of uh, one of the best times of the year for us, just uh, getting to talk uh, with all of our customers who have bought from us. So uh, that that kind of concludes our presentation for everybody. We do have some uh, T-shirt winners um, that will contact you. Um, I don't know why it says Yeti there. I think it's just T-shirts this year. Sorry, folks, to, to confuse you. Um, but we do have some T-shirt winners. Um, we will get that information out to you um, if you want a T-shirt. So uh, you can follow us on our social media pages. We'll post a lot of our plant photos to uh, Instagram um, as well as uh, our Facebook page. So please uh, subscribe to those. Uh, and just a reminder, this is our last chance for our uh, POP enrollment. So if you are um, a someone who has bought these signs from us in the past, um, please get your POP enrollments in uh, by tomorrow. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with the POP program, uh, it's a sign that you can buy. Um, we do 22 inch by 28 inch um, expanded PVC signs. Uh, they have rivets in them. They look really great uh, as a display item, um, and it really helps with plant selection for your customers at the garden center. Um, we also do a digital format, so if you want to print these out and hand them uh, to to your customers at the at the garden center, um, they can just print out, and they're good fact sheets. Uh, and so we do have a digital version of that as well. Along with our um, POP program, we will be sending out a spring supplement. Uh, probably tomorrow or later today. Uh, our spring supplement is basically additions to our catalog offerings um, that didn't make it into the catalog for a number of reasons. Uh, they could be items that are so new um, that we haven't grown them yet, we're not sure about them. They could be items that uh, were confirmed late by our supplier, um, so therefore we didn't have them on the order form or uh, didn't put them in our catalog. Um, and they could be items that just tend to finish a little bit later in the season. So these are all items that'll be part of the spring supplement, be a new selection of plants to look at and look out for. Um, so yeah, look out for that later this week. Um, and I believe that's it, Fred, did I miss anything? Oh, I think we covered it all. I think we covered everything. So um, all right, if anybody has any additional comments, please feel free to email me uh, at mbenedict at millcreekplants.com or our sales uh, sales account. I'd be happy to answer any questions about your pre-books, um, working with our availability. Um, and just a heads up, our first availability of the year goes out next week, Thursday, and that'll continue uh, all summer long and into fall. So really appreciate everybody uh, who, who came out, uh, signed in for this. Please share it with your team members to get everybody familiar with our plant material and the new stuff. Um, that's one of the most exciting things about working with plants, uh, in my opinion, is the new introductions. Um, and it, there's always something fun uh, new every year. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and email us. And uh, with that, I think we'll conclude. Uh, that'll be the end of our presentation. Thank you all. So Thanks, long. Everybody. See you around. Okay.